Hey guys, I'm Andy here at MVP Java. Thanks for joining me. So today we're going to be talking about how to switch uh, between scenes in JavaFX. So this is a, a topic that comes up quite a bit. Uh, when you start learning JavaFX, you're practicing with one scene and, and things seem to go quite well. However, once you start adding, let's say, like a login screen, and that login screen then has to... Um, load let's say the main application upon um, a successful login things start getting more blurry in that sense where now you start finding yourself having to load multiple scenes within the same application within the same stage right and you can just see at that point that oh there might be other scenes that I have to display and you're gonna find yourself having this kind of code duplication uh, in order to do this it's not that loading a scene is difficult uh, in and itself it's how to do it with minimal friction. So that's really what I'm gonna show you in this uh, tutorial, how to support switching scenes with minimal friction. So what does minimal friction mean? Minimal friction means you're gonna do a bang up job in terms of maintainability, you're gonna centralize this stuff, and you're gonna make it easy to add new scenes and not have to maintain patches of code you know, in different types of packages, whether it be testing packages or your main source packages, in order to ensure that the right scene pops up by copy and pasting a little function here and there, okay? So uh, let's take a look at that. Now, kind of a prerequisite to this video is the one that I uh, made with um, JavaFX and Spring Boot or Spring, right? Um, and the reason for that is because, you know, without Spring, this is gonna get a little bit uglier to do. I've, I've opted to go with Spring. Uh, I I love Spring, so for me it's not like such a uh, such a big thing. It's kind of like the de facto standard for me to use in my Java projects. So in that demo, I show you uh, how to set up Java FX and Spring, but I've actually refactored the code quite a bit to do that, and um, I'll show you that right here. So like you, I'm always trying to refactor my code uh, mercilessly and uh, try to make it the best possible version of myself. Uh, uh, that it represents, right? That's pretty much what uh, MVP Jav is for, right? It's it's to, to try to bring out the best in you to be the best programmer you can be. So that's what I'm all about. And over here, uh, you'll see a bit of a difference on what I did in the other tutorial. Uh, it's very mean and lean, which is nice, right? You don't want to have a lot of things in the main. Already it was pretty lean and mean, but I took it to another level here. So. First off, we are going to be loading our Spring um, application context, which I covered in that other video. And that happens after uh, the main method calls the application.launch, okay? So that'll go off like a, this comes from the JavaFX um, application class that we extend, <coughs> as I also uh, explained in the other video. Now, over here, this is the initialization thread we go off and we boot uh, the Spring application context, which again is just a copy paste of the last tutorial that I explained. I haven't changed anything here, okay? So I go off, I build the Spring application context and I make Spring now um, available, okay? It goes off and it scans all the at components and that configuration classes and so on and so forth. Then in the start method, I come up with the concept of getting a stage manager, okay? That is the beauty of, uh, of, of this tutorial, is I'm gonna show you how to centralize everything in one class called the stage manager that is gonna be responsible for switching the scenes for you. So you're gonna have no other code to use to do that in the rest of your application, but say, hey, I want a stage manager. And you do that by asking spring to give it to you, right? Dependency injection. Now, in this case, I have no uh, choice to use get bean because I am in the bootstrap class itself, okay? So in this case, I can't use like an at auto wired annotation yet, but after that, you'll see you can do that. So I saved that uh, stage manager inside a um, instance variable as well. And uh, off I go, right? I display the initial scene, which is another little method that I've made um, as protected. And the reason why I have done that is because it allows me the flexibility in classes that will extend this uh, main class to decide what other type of scene they would like to show uh, on the initial loadup. This is gonna be very, very useful in your functional testing. Okay, so if you want to do a, a functional test, let's say 
on the main window itself and not the login window, right? You don't want to have to log in every time you test a main window. That'll just make your test like pff, way too long. Then you're going to want to extend this class and, and override this method. So that's the beauty of this method. Um, and you'll notice that I'm just using the stage manager and I simply say switch scene. And then I have here, right? Something to help with maintainability, an enum that I made, right? So let's go take a look at that enum, but look at here. I just said login, right? So you know I'm displaying the login view here. So if we go take a look at this enum, which is really gonna help me define all the views in my application, you'll notice that I have a main constant here, main view and a login view. But you'll also notice that they're overriding these two methods, which I have made abstract, right? You can always do this in an enum, is come up with them abstract methods that whenever you define a new constant, it will not compile until you implement these abstract methods, right? Sound familiar? Like an abstract class or like, a, let's say, an interface that you have to implement to all the public abstract methods, right? You can do this in an enum. You might have not known that. It's actually a very useful thing. Uh, so what I have here is I'll get the title of every uh, viewer or scene, if you want to call it. But here I'm calling it an FXML view. And the reason I'm doing that is because I also have a, another method called get FXML file. So you'll notice I'm actually hiding in here the actual path to the file. So this enum here is kind of really sweet because I'm able to tuck away the strings and the titles and let's say I come up with another view, right? Let's say I said, well, I'm coming up with like um, a splash screen view or something like that, or um, a confirmation box view or something like that. If I come in here and I, I add it, let's say I just say, I'll call it splash, it's gonna complain, you won't compile. And that's because you have to implement these two abstract methods. So in terms of uh, adding something to this enum and forgetting to uh, do something else, right? And then in the in the application, it crashes at runtime. You're forced to do the right job here when you're adding another view. And it's the only place that you can add your or declare your different types of views because all the methods in the stage manager accept a FXML view. So because everything is gonna be centralized in the stage manager, you have no choice to know to come here, add one of these, and then you know you have to override these two guys. So in terms of centralizing where your views are gonna be, it's a good thing. All right, so over here, let's go take a look at that stage manager. I'm bragging so much about the stage manager, but we gotta go take a look at it, right? So here it is, stage manager. Uh, let me just get rid of these unused imports. That's much better. You'll notice here that I am using a constructor uh, injection here, well, normal, normal uh, parameter passing in the, in the stage manager. You'll, know, you'll see later that I'm, I'm gonna use, be using Spring to, to create this, right? You notice that I did like uh, the get bean in the main method, right? So it's actually gonna create this for me. It's passing in something of type Spring FXML loader, which I covered in the other tutorial. But just quickly, if we go in there, all it does is it gets a handle on the Spring application context, uh, our resource bundles going on there, and this load method, which is what I was showcasing in uh, that other tutorial, is tucking away the FXML loader and setting uh, Spring as the uh, controller factory, okay? Again, I'll explain in the other tutorial. So this is allowing Spring and uh, JavaFX to you know, coexist together. Basically, that's why it's called Spring FXML Loader. So you pass in the path of the FXML file and it shoots out the parent root node hierarchy, which is extremely important, right? That's basically your scene, right? Your your root node hierarchy, once you pump that into a scene object, you, you have your scene. So I'm also pumping in a stage. And this is a very tricky part because th the stage is only available, right? to go back to the main, the stage is only available once the JavaFX application thread has been spawned, which is basically here, okay? So you'll notice that I get the stage given to me by JavaFX, and then I'm passing it to the stage manager. And the stage manager, because it's a managed, uh, it's going to be a managed um, Spring Bean, it cannot be instantiated without having the stage available. So it's kind of like the chicken and the egg where the stage manager is gonna be built at when the application gets initialized, but the stage is only up 
at runtime, you know? So we're gonna have to use some lazy instantiation here for the stage manager to get this running properly. And I'll show you that in a second, okay? So back to the stage manager, I need these two things. I save them, right? So they're gonna becoming immutable here because they're both final. And this is where, you know, our bread and butter is, right? Switch scene. Just give me something of type fxml view, that enum, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load the view node hierarchy and uh, I, I do that by using you know, one of those abstract methods in the enum. I get the path to the view. And down here, I, all I do is I use my spring fxml loader. I load the file. I get my root node hierarchy back. I return it. And um, then I obviously use it. Okay. So over here, let me just go back up to where the method was. Yeah. I save it in here, my view root node hierarchy. I pass it to this um, internal show method along with the title that's also inside that enum. And this is just basically where you go off and you prepare your scene. And uh, preparing the scene here is uh, just basically going to the primary stage, getting the scene. If it's not like create a new one. And I set the root of the scene to that root node that I just loaded through the, um, the loader, okay? Then I prep my primary stage, setting the scene, setting the title, all that, that stuff, and I show it. So this is the kind of code that you see in a lot of tutorials, uh, that it's in one place, let's say in the main. Um, and then this is when, you know, when you start loading up different types of scenes that you trying to figure out how to do this in one place. And this is how you do it, okay? So I've tucked it away in the stage manager. Now, if we go take a look at my spring configuration file here, again, which I covered in the other tutorial, uh, at configuration, I auto wire a spring FXML loader in there. And the next time I want a stage manager, remember when I said get bean, right? So when I say get bean, um, because it's a bean here, the um, spring dependency injection framework knows that I'm talking about this guy. It says, okay, pass me the stage. I can get a hold of the FXML loader, okay, because I auto wired it up here. That's not a problem. But the stage, I need to know that at runtime. And if I don't make this lazy, okay, what's going to happen is you're, you, you, it, won't, it won't know how to build it because the stage manager being gets built up at initialization time, right? So what I'm going to show you here is extremely important to understand. I hope I'm going to do a good job explaining it. Spring gets initialized here, right, in the initialization thread. But what happens is, is in the start method, that's where really all the JavaFX application thread starts. Okay, so you notice there's two kind of contexts there. So when all the Spring beans are built here, it can't have access to the stage in the other thread here. So that is why I absolutely have to go in here and say lazy. So at uh, build up time, right, initialization time, it's going to say, okay, I see it's lazy. I know that you're going to eventually give me the stage. So I'm not going to throw an exception. I know you're going to call this at, you know, at the application thread time. So over here, that's exactly what I do, right? When I say get bean on this guy, I'm not calling it in here, right? That's the initialization thread. I'm calling it in the application thread over here. And I pass in its runtime parameter that it needs. Beautiful, we have a centralized place now to store that stage, which can then take in those scenes that we pass in via that uh, FXML view um, enum, right? And then it just goes off and it displays the scene. Okay, so in this case here, I'm saying I wanna, pr I'm gonna show the login screen. So when I press play here, you're gonna see the login screen show up right off the bat, right? Pa default password is all in all. And then I have my application, I can click and play. And this is an application I, I, I've showed you how to build in um, JavaFX multiple controllers. I showed you how to build that, okay? So now the question is, how does the, how does the login screen know, right? How to go and load the main application? Well, that's a good question. So um, I have behind the login screen, okay? A controller appropriately called login controller right and in there again this is all spring based right this is a component I have uh, auto wiring so dependency injection of, of an authentication service that I built 
But you also see, I want this to be lazy. So why do you want it to be lazy again? Well, thing is, is I want a stage manager. And remember the discussion we just had about the stage manager. I can't inject this at initialization time because the stage manager needs the stage, okay? So the login controller, I don't need it up and running right away anyways, right? So when that login window will get instantiated, the login controller will be there with the stage already available. So that's why it's lazy. You'll notice that when the login button is pressed, right? This is a callback, an FXML callback when that button is pressed. I go through my authentication service, I authenticate, right? And then I take my reference to my stage manager, right? That I passed into the constructor here. And I switch the scene and I switch scene to main. You see how easy that is? I don't have any copy pasted code everywhere. This is really maintainable code. Now, if I want to create some other scene, right? I know I have to go to this enum and add it because right now all I have is a login and a main. Okay. So it's a nice central point to go to, right? If I actually said uh, login here and I went back, right? Obviously nothing good is going to happen, right? You're going to log in, you're going to log in, you're going to, right? So again, you see this thing comes up over and over again. So uh, just to show you that it actually works, right? Um, so now that anytime you have a component uh, or a controller in this case, right, that needs to switch the scenes, all you do is ask Spring to auto wire for you, in this case, lazily, right? You could actually make a point to create a, like a, a different type of annotation, put these together or something like that, but I don't mind this. Uh, a stage manager, okay? And that is basically it. So now you guys know how to go about um, doing this kind of stuff. And again, looking at this main class, I mean, I'm, I'm in awe on how, how little there is here, right? There's really almost nothing here. And that is, that, that's the why I like it. It's very maintainable, very slim. Remember, you're not really testing your main, right? You're testing what the main is calling the other components. So this will work for as many scenes as you want, okay? So in terms of what's next here, uh, some follow-up questions. I would say, how do we go ahead and do some functional testing on using multiple scenes? Now, I've been coming up with a series on test effects to show you how to do functional testing, which is which which I'm really enjoying. Uh, part three is going to be coming up um, fairly quickly, and I'm going to be using this tutorial to um, you know making reference to it at least because it's important to leverage the scene manager in your functional testing to switch the scenes, right? Especially, like I said at the beginning, if you want to test one scene, but you don't want to go through the login screen all the time, or you just want to uh, go through the login screen and you never want to look at the main, stuff like that, right? So this, this will increase in complexity with more than two scenes, obviously. So, and I'll also include in that tutorial the uh, view page pattern, which is uh, a really nice pattern to improve um, maintainability in your functional test. So really make sure to watch that one coming up real soon. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate your time, and until next time.